Good day. I am Jomar Fajardo Rabahante from the Biomathematics Research Cluster of the Institute of Mathematical Sciences and Physics, University of the Philippines, Los Baños. I would like to introduce an alternative method for deriving the basic reproduction number, or R0, in mathematical models of infectious diseases. In this talk, we are presenting a method that can be an alternative way to the usual techniques such as the next generation matrix for calculating R0. Our method uses numerical simulations and a classical machine learning method, the logistic regression. Our method simplifies two common analyses in infectious disease compartmental modeling, the calculation of R0 and parameter sensitivity analysis. To provide a brief background, Usually, there are various steps in analyzing infectious diseases models, like investigating the boundedness and non-negativity of solution, the stability of equilibria, determining the basic reproduction number, parameter fitting, sensitivity analysis such as using partial rank correlation coefficient, and many more. Here, we combine two of the steps, determining the equation for the reproduction number and parameter sensitivity analysis. Deriving the basic reproduction number, such as using the next generation matrix, could be time-consuming and tedious. Also, there could be different derived formulations. In our method, no need to set up matrices, no need to compute eigenvalues with non-numeric parameters. The user of our method just need to run the R code that we have prepared. Since in parameter sensitivity analysis, we run statistically sufficient number of numerical simulations, then what we propose is to utilize these numerical simulations to also identify the R0. In our method, we are going to derive an equation using logistic regression that will represent the basic reproduction number. While we are proposing a numeric and machine learning based method, we can still derive an equation which can mimic how the analytic R0 mechanistically explains the effect of parameters to the occurrence of an outbreak. Also, the coefficients of the logistic regression provide us an idea how sensitive is the outbreak occurrence to the various parameters. For example, in susceptible infectious recovered compartmental model, we can derive the following logistic regression formula that will become the threshold if a combination of parameter values will lead, will lead to an outbreak or not. When the logistic regression formula will have values greater than 0 0.5, then R0 is greater than 1, which means an outbreak will occur. Now, to discuss in detail our method, here is our proposed steps. First is to implement sufficient number of numerical simulations of the infectious disease model. For example, 400 times the number of parameters. We can use Latin hypertube sampling to select combinations of parameter values. In each simulation, we need to categorize the combination of parameter values as one, if outbreak occurred or zero otherwise. Second, like a classification problem, we use logistic regression to classify combinations of parameter values that lead to one or zero. The derived logistic regression equation mimics the use of R0 as an epidemic threshold. If R0 is greater than one, then there is an outbreak no outbreak if R0 is less than 1. The third step is optional. If in each simulation, R0 can be computed, for example, R0 as the average number of secondary cases a primary case would produce in a completely susceptible population, then sequential logistic regression can be used to derive an equation for R0. We have created an R code 
that interested users can explore and use to implement our method. The R code can be modified for other types of infectious disease compartmental models. As a brief run through, the first part of the R code is the ordinary differential equation model. The next part is the Latin hypercube sampling of the parameter values. Then we can run the numerical simulations using, for example, DESolve, but do not forget to also record the threshold that we can use for the logistic regression, such as categorizing the result as having an outbreak or not. Then there is part of the R code that will save all the necessary numerical results that we can read later for the second and third steps of the method. For the second step, we will use numerical simulation results in the logistic regression fitting. The independent variable are the parameter values, and the dependent is the categorical variable that will be used for classif classifying if an outbreak occurred or not. After doing the fitting, we compute various uh, performance metrics, including p-values, the accuracy based on the confusion matrix, precision, sensitivity, specificity, mean squared error, area under the ROC curve, etc. The R code will also output the logistic regression formula in logit and probability form. The user can also explore the saved performance metrics. Now for the third step, we need to estimate per simulation the basic reproduction number. For example, in each run, the value of Z after the infection period one over gamma unit of time is the approximate average number of secondary cases infected by the primary case, which is the definition of R0. We can use this as our numerical estimate for R0 that we will use for deriving the equation for R0. We can check if the numerical estimate for R0 is consistent with the definition of R0 as a threshold for identifying the occurrence of an outbreak. If we are confident that we can use the numerical estimate for R0, we can do sequential logistic regression. We can also check the table of outputs. We need to set indicators if R0 is below 1, between 1 and 2, between 2 and 3, etc. We can also check if the results are consistent in the table, such as if an outbreak occurs both when using R0 as indicator and when using increase in number of cases as indicator. The approximate epidemic final size should also be consistent with the estimated numerical R0. For example, in SIR model, here are the logistic regression equations. The first equation shows if R0 is below 1 or greater than 1. This equation can be used to, to determine if there will be an outbreak or not. If R0 is greater than 1, then the second equation characterizes if R0 is between 1 and 2 or greater than 2. If R0 is greater than 2, then the third equation characterizes if R0 is between 2 and 3 or greater than 3. We need to do the logistic regression sequentially. These equations can be used to represent R0 and to identify the value of R0. For SIR model, we can observe that the infection and recovery rates are of the same impact in outbreak occurrence. However, 
when outbreak occurs, the recovery rate or the infection period has bigger impact in increasing the value of R0. Please take note that we can also set non-integer indicators. For susceptible exposed infectious recovered or SEIR model, here is the derived logistic regression equation with parameter values as inputs to identify if R0 is greater than 1 or less than 1. We can see that the performance metrics have good values. For more complex models like vector-borne diseases such as dengue, here is the logistic regression equation to identify what parameter combinations will lead to R0 greater than 1 or less than 1. We see that as models become complicated and as the number of parameters increases, the predictive performance of the logistic regression may decrease. However, the accuracy is still high. We can check, we can check if there are parameters that we can combine. For example, the alpha and K in the vector-borne disease model, which both affect the reproduction of mosquito population. For example, setting K as constant, the performance improves. Hence, the question is, how can we reduce the dimension of the parameters? Can we use additional algorithms, such as principal component analysis, to improve our method? This is for further research. In vector-borne diseases, since two species are involved, can we combine parameters with similar impacts? We know that if, if infection rate both in humans and vectors are high, and the recovery rate for humans and death rate for vectors are low, then we are confident that outbreak will occur. However, if parameter values in humans and vectors are of opposite levels, how can we, how can we reduce the false positives? How can we increase the specificity? This is a topic for further research. In conclusion, we have shown an alternative method in deriving the basic reproduction number or R0 in compartmental infectious disease models. Our method as a template can also be used for other types of models, for example, in agent-based simulation to derive the basic reproduction number. We are now preparing our paper to show the advantages and limitations of this method, especially in dealing with more complex models with many parameters. To know more about existing methods for deriving R0, here are some of the references. The first three are good references with regards to the next generation matrix. Again, this is Jomar Fajardo Rabahante, and thank you very much for listening.